Hi there, and welcome in to the mini version of My State of Mind here on WPRI.com. The full show on Friday evening has Robert Sanders, the former board chairman of the Rhode Island Black Heritage Society. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy with experience so deep and, 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 and thoughts on the George Floyd tragedy that I think are something you really want to take note of. So enjoy that program on MyRI TV and Fox Providence at midnight. And of course, it'll post right here on WPRI.com. In the meantime, the big news from the COVID world today in Rhode Island is that it looks like we have about a 2% infection rate that's projected by the folks from Brown who took the survey for the people who may be a tested for the virus itself or antibody tested. They put out 5,000 requests. This is a plan the governor had last month you know, for people to actually sign up and say, yeah, I want to get tested. And they got about a 15% return and in the neighborhood of 1,000 people, the numbers are kind of funky and they're still trying to go through them. But they feel like they can project that we're at about a 2% infection rate, meaning that doesn't mean everybody's sick. That means that you may have had experience with the COVID-19 virus, perhaps, and most of us, I guess, asymptomatic. Uh, I'm also told that antibody tests are getting a little bit more credible, so shop for one at your doctor. I very well may take them up on that because something was going on in March. In the meantime, we see that uh, there's an 8% plus infection rate in the Latino community and a 5% plus infection rate in the black community. And while the white community is at 1%, the average becomes 2 So when you hear about these racial disparity numbers, uh, there's tangible evidence that it does exist. And it doesn't have anything to do with the physical makeup of people. It has everything to do with where you are, what you're doing, who you're seeing, how you're congregating, what your susceptibility is in terms of your environment, and all of that. So there's a lot that needs to be uh, broken down from that number, but it's good to know. And, you know, less a second wave, it's a little bit reassuring. At the same time, we don't know where we're going to be as the rest of the country is spiking. Speaking of the rest of the country, I just couldn't get away without uh, reminding you that the president is now going back into rally time. He's going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma next week. And if you would like to attend the rally or any one other rally that he's going to have, you simply have to uh, register like they do in Woonsocket Radio. And you just need to, uh, to say yes to the following. By checking and registering below, you are acknowledging that an inherent risk of exposure to COVID-19 exists in any public place where people are present. By attending the rally, you and any guests voluntarily assume all risks related to to exposure to COVID-19 and agree not to hold the president's campaign, the arena, the management company, or any of the affiliates responsible for injury or illness of any kind. And while this waiver thing may catch on, I'm not sure. The more you ask about waivers, the more you're admitting that you're liable for something. So I'm not sure that's going to be the case. It's not like the back of a sports ticket or a concert ticket. But I just have to ask the question, have you ever seen or heard of anybody more narcissistic in your life than the President of the United States of America whose charge is to keep us safe and who has the unmitigated gall, the unmitigated gall to stack thousands of people into an arena? to pay homage to him. He needs a rally like an addict needs cocaine. And the arena is the dealer. This is an addiction problem. And we are all suffering for it. Have a great weekend.